Okay, today I'd like to take a few minutes and talk with you about uh, ratios and proportions. So first of all, I'll try to give you a definition of what ratios are. Um, def definition we have here is uh, ratio is just a comparison of two numbers using division. Um, ratios are usually used to take a look at a large group and you try to break it into uh, uh, parts based upon certain characteristics. So if you uh, say for example look around your class uh, you may notice the number of male students uh, and count those versus the number of female students say for example uh, in the class you may have for example uh, 10 male students and then counting up the number of female students you may have uh, eight female students so that's a ratio of 10 to 8 uh, but in most cases uh, you'd want to simplify that uh, uh, down by uh, looking at say what we go into the 10 and a so that ratio could be reduced down and simplified uh, you know to 5 to 4 so the ratio of uh, males to females in your class if it were 10 to 8 uh, could be simplified down to, to 5 to 4 um, so ratios are used uh, in the position that I'm in primarily we look at uh, number of students to teachers so uh, looking at class sizes across our school system uh, we try to maintain certain ratios in various classes so we would count up the number of students and compare that back to the the number of teachers that, that we have so that we make sure that class sizes are not too large or if class sizes are small we would try to add students into those classes as much as possible uh, to kind of balance that out so once again ratios you're just comparing uh, two numbers and uh, using division uh, and as I said before just a lot of various examples that you could use and those are just some a good example of ratios is probably something that you're more familiar with uh, in your world of course I'm uh, much much older uh, and uh, so I'm not as familiar with uh, a lot of the modern technology, a lot of the modern games, but in this picture, if you were to count up the number of plants uh, in the picture, you could count, and there would be 18 plants on the left-hand side, and if you were to count up the number of zombies on the right-hand side, you would uh, count up to 8. So the ratio of plants to zombies in this picture uh, that you see here would be a ratio of 18 to 8. Uh, of course, if you were looking to simplify that down uh, by using division, uh, you could divide both of those, you know, uh, and would, could reduce down to, say, what, 9 over 4 if you're looking to reduce that down by, say, dividing both the, those numbers by 2. So ratio of 18 to 8 or in, like, simplify it down to possibly uh, 9 to 4 uh, of using this uh, picture of zombies and plants. So once again, this is uh, kind of the, from the picture wants to show the relationship between the number of zombies and the math. We create a fraction. So basically, you have the 18 over 8 uh, that you see here, 18 plants to 8 zombies. Then we can reduce the fraction. Uh, as you see, 18 over 8 is equal to or equivalent to 9 over 4. So once again, you had in the picture that you saw before, uh, nine plants to four zombies as represented as a ratio that you see from the from the picture something to remember about ratios uh, probably when you take tests in the future they would always want you to simplify it down to the simplest form simplify the fraction as we did before from the 18 to 8 down to the 9 to 4 uh, using the calculator that simplifies it uh, for you and hopefully by the time that you're uh, viewing this class you've had a class on calculators because as I said before I'm much much older uh, than, than most of you in here so I'm not as familiar with using the modern technology of the calculators so uh, probably by the time that I was uh, growing up it came to Palm Pilot so as you can see not Palm Pilot I would put 9 over 4 using a Palm Pilot so and ratios can be shown in a variety of ways uh, as you saw before that's one way to show what ratio 9 to 4 sometimes you can actually write it out and spell it out 9 to 4 or a lot of times you just put the two colons there and 9 to 4 so, so you may see ratios written probably one of these three ways uh, as far as how to represent them. Something else we'll talk about are rates. 
rate is a ratio that measures uh, items that are different units of measure uh, as a rate. A good example of that is miles per hour, uh, particularly if you're on a long trip, uh, uh, maybe going to visit some relatives or going to the beach or something. You may say, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Uh, so you may want to start calculating how much longer it's going to be by uh, following signs on the interstate that tells how far it is to your destination. Uh, so if, uh, say you're 120 miles away from wherever you may be going, whether it's to the beach or to uh, relatives or a friend's house, uh, and you're traveling say at 60 miles an hour, well, so you'd be going, have a, you know that you have 120 miles to go, that's one uh, unit of measure is mileage, and it's you're traveling uh, in your car pretty much steady at 60 miles an hour, and in order to do the as far as figuring out the rate, that would be, well, it would probably take you, if you're doing 60 miles in one hour, that would probably, t you know, you probably have to, you know, around two hours to uh, go left to travel. So, and like I so said, rates are often used when uh, buying things. Uh, for example, if you're at the mall, cruising through the mall, wandering around, and you walk into a certain store and they may say that uh, they have a special today that you could buy three shirts for $10. So you'd have basically ten dollars and then you know that you could you know purchase up to three shirts with that ten dollars um, so what kind of discount or what it would it be if you were to break that down to comparable how much is each shirt cost once again if you were to divide to divide those you divide the three into the ten which hopefully I'll attempt to do with the calculator so let's start out with the price of ten dollars and then with the BC that you know on the calculator that each shirt you could buy in three shirts and how much would that be so that's three and a third of course you'd want to convert that over so basically it'd be three and a third which would be I guess three dollars and thirty three cents if you're if you're looking at the price of each shirt so Okay. Unit rates, uh, that's a rate that's simplified so the denominator is one, it's called a unit rate, uh, similar to what we have done with the shirts, trying to find out how much each individual shirt costs uh, with the price of $10 for three shirts. Breaking that down, you know that each shirt uh, individually probably costs uh, $3.33. Probably see a similar when you're going to say Food City to buy uh, the drinks of Diet Mountain Dew, which is one of my favorite drinks, uh, uh, since I'm not a coffee drinker and I need to get the caffeine in some other format other than coffee to get me going in the mornings, you'll see a lot of times that they'll have uh, the bundles of uh, Diet Mountain Dews a lot of times, say you can buy uh, four for $12, so how much would each bundle of Diet Mountain Dew cost if you were to do that? So. If, trying to figure that out as you go down the grocery aisle and seeing the Diet Mountain Dew and thinking, well, uh, if I just wanted to get one, and I don't know that uh, it's $12 for a bundle of four, uh, so taking that and dividing it out, you would know that probably each individual package of, say, a six pack of the large 20 some ounce Mountain Dews would be close to approximately $3 each if you were to look at that. So it, the reason it's called a unit rate is because it shows you how much the first item corresponds to one unit in the, in the second item as a unit rate. Another definition, we have uh, proportions. Proportions are equations that show you that two uh, ratios are equal to each other. Um, for example, if you have 4 over 8 uh, as one proportion, you know that 4 over 8 would be equal to uh, the same as probably 1 half. So taking a pizza and you cut it into uh, 8 slices that you get from Papa John's, they usually have large slices of pizza, more so than Little Caesars, and you get the pizza and it's uh, cut into 8 slices and one of your friends uh, uh, gets up and uh, uh, takes eats four slices of the pizza and you come back and determine what happened to my pizza, how much of my pizza is left so basically that is but as you can tell is one half of the pizza if you were to open the box and four slices were uh, somehow mysteriously gone and someone had ingested those while you were just not paying attention or uh, wandering around and uh, so that some somehow they ended up eating half of your pizza 
So formats of proportions are set up uh, as equivalent fractions. The example that we use here is 6 twelfths is equal to 1 half. Uh, once again, if you wanted to use the pizza example or a pie, then basically you'd have it cut into 12 pieces. Uh, then 6 over 12 represents uh, how much of the pie or how much of the pizza proportionate wise, and that's equal to uh, uh, 1 half of the pizza. And proportions are generally used to find one part of a ratio when the other part is known, and then both parts of a related ratio are also known. Uh, another example that I'll go over is if I know that for every five cats in the pound, there are two dogs, and I know that there are 45 cats in the pound total, how can I use this information to help me solve the equation or figure out how many dogs are there if the ratios are equivalent or the same. So it's five cats to two dogs in a pound. That's the ratio, and I've counted up the number of cats. It's uh, 45, but I'm running out of time. And I, uh, I don't have time to go around and count the dogs, or they keep getting moved around. Uh, how can I solve and figure out how many dogs are in the pound if that is the ratio? You can do this by using what's called cross products. Um, as you know, uh, multiplication and uh, division are uh, considered what inverse operations. So sometimes to solve unknowns for division problems, you can use multiplication. And the way you do this is by using cross products, which we'll try to use, show you here in this, uh, this example. Cross products refers to the idea that the products of two groups of numbers, uh, you can multiply across diagonally from each other and the proportions end up being equal. So for example, the example that you see here, you have 6 to 4 is equal to 3 over 2. Cross products, you'd take the 6 and multiply the 2, as you see 6 times 2, and then again on the other side you take the, the top, the 3, and multiply it times 4, so 3 times 4. So knowing that 6 times 2 is 12, and then 3 times 4 is 12, that those are uh, using proportions are equivalent or equal to, equal to each other as far as proportions go uh, using uh, what we call cross products. So once again going back to our example with, uh, with a pound we knew that there were five cats and two dogs, five cats for every two dogs as our proportion and we know by counting up that there are 45 cats in the pound so hopefully they've been taking a lot of their time and cleaning up after uh, that number of cats and dogs uh, I'm more so of a dog person so I'm more interested in finding out how many dogs there are in in the pound uh, in case I wanted to take a look and uh, see if I want to take one home as a as a pet so the set ratios set the ratios that are equal to each other so we know that we have five cats two dogs is the same as 45 cats over how many dogs. So using the cross products, as we demonstrated before, you would take the five cats times the unknown number of dogs, which we will represent as X is our unknown. And then we take the 45 cats in our cross products and multiply by the two. So 45 times two we know is the 90. So now we've set up 5 times the unknown, which is 5x, is equal to 90. So in order to take this, we want to solve for the x. So we want to leave the, okay, we want to draw the line to separate our sides. So we know that when we move sides, we, we do the reverse operation. So that if we are uh, doing division, when we change sides or whatever, we want to do the reverse. So here we have, and we want to solve for x. So we're going to take the 5, we're going to divide both sides by the 5. So in the 5, we leaves x over here because 5 over 5 is the 1, so which just leaves the x. Then when you divide the 5 into the 90, of course, that's where you end up with the 18 dogs in the example. So in the ratio of 5 to 2, 5 cats to 2 dogs. This ratio, if you know that you counted up 45 cats 
in another pound or another part of the pound that the ratio was the same that you would end up with 18 dogs to choose from uh, for one that you'd want to take home uh, if you choose to do so. Okay, okay now you uh, have the opportunity just to do some sample problems uh, using the cross products and solving similar to uh, the example that, uh, that we did. So just remember uh, in the cross products you want to take top and multiply it times the bottom on the other side. Remember to draw your line separating your sides and then on the same from the other side. Take the top, multiply times the bottom as far as your cross products to try to solve for those. So we give you a little time to kind of work through some of the samples and uh, uh, we'll discuss those and talk. Okay, we'll go ahead and work through some of the sample problems and that you had an opportunity to take a look at some of those uh, in order to do the solving for the cross products. Uh, once again, remember uh, we go from top to bottom, so here you would have 4 times t and then equal to 3 times 8. So now that we've established that, we'll draw the line to separate the sides so that we can solve. Um, so here 4 times t would have 4t, 3 times 8 would be 24. So now so we've multiplied, remember with crossing over the lines we need to do the inverse or the opposite operation which in this case would be to divide so uh, we want to leave the t on this side for, and then, then divide both sides by the 4. So here you have the 24 into 4 uh, so if you want to use your calculator to divide those out in order to uh, see, bring up the calculator Four divided by four, and so that would be the t would be equal to six as far as the first uh, sample problem that we have. So uh, six over eight would be equal to three over four uh, in the sample problem. Okay, sample problem number two. You have the twenty-four over five is equal to just unknown, which would be y over 7. So, working with your cross products, you want to start out with, the, of course, doing your lines. So, you have 5 times y, you do the parentheses this time, equals to 24 times 7. Draw your line. So, you'd want to then work on the course you'd have to work out the 24 times the 7 using your calculator if I can find the clear so you have 24 times 7 enter so that would be 168 and then of course you have your 5y now crossing over the line you need to do the inverse of the opposite so once again dividing by 5 so you have y and then the 168, using the calculator, divide by 5 would be 33.6. Or if you needed to do it as a fraction, it would be 33 and 2, excuse me, 33 and 33 and 3 fifths if you need to do it as a uh, as a fraction or mixed number with a fraction or improper imp improper fraction so that would be sample problem number two okay sample number three you have x plus 3 over 4 is equal to 7 over 8 so starting out uh, of course with your cross products uh, we'll start with the x plus 3 and the bottom number 8. So in this case, you'd have need to do the 8. And since uh, taking into account that everybody needs everybody, you're going to do the 8 times the x plus the 3. 
is going to be equal to the 7 times 4. And for me, I'll start out, of course, with the easier side. Draw the line. 7 times 4 is 28. Uh, of course, knowing your multiplication tables is uh, always a big help. And here in this case, taking in 8 times the x, and then to everybody needs everybody, you do the 8 times the 3, which in this case would be plus 24. So now we're to the point, now we want to leave the unknown on one side, try to get our whole numbers on the other side. Now, going across the line, we have the 24, but once we go across the line and do the divide, we have to change the sign of 24, so 28 in this case goes from positive to negative 24, which would leave a positive 4. So I still have 8x on this side. Uh, of course, crossing back over the line to leave the x on the side of the line, the unknown. 8 into 8 is 1, which just leaves the x, and then 4 over 8, which uh, if you're looking at uh, considering as a fractions, you could divide top and bottom by 2. Or if you want to go ahead and use your calculator, get it up here where you can see, you would do of course, 8 divided by 4. Excuse me, did that the wrong, of course, wrong way. I've got to put the 4 in first, so 4 divided by 8 using it on the calculator, which would be 0.5 as a decimal. Of course, if you want to change it to a fraction, would be one half if you wanted to use it as a fraction in your final answer. So that would be sample problem number three. Of course, as coming up on practice problems, as a teacher, you can determine how you'd want to do the practice problems if you want to give students uh, an opportunity to work on those and then go back over those. Or uh, if you feel like students have a good grasp uh, of those, you can uh, just work some of them those or pick some of those if you choose to do so so as a teacher or a student uh, you can use those as you desire so okay here you have an opportunity to see the practice problems with the solutions uh, worked out as a teacher if you want to take some time to go through uh, these step by step you'd have an opportunity to do so and of course oh by the way who am I? Once I've enjoyed this opportunity to bring this lesson regarding see, one second, ratios and portions to you. And of course, you've had an opportunity just to see me from the freckled hand, but you probably know from uh, the way I talk and the dialect, I'm probably from around here and I work in the school system. So, my name is Kyle Evans, and I work at the administration building as student services supervisor. So, hope you've enjoyed it, and thank you for your time and attention.